Hello and welcome to Module 309, Class 4 Unrestricted Driver's License Training. This is Video 1 in the course. This particular course focuses on helping you to get past the learner's license or in-class written test and will also teach you how to do a pre-trip inspection. Here's why we care about the Class 4 license. It's considered an essential qualification in the community-based services side of our field. And that's because you'll often be asked to drive many people at once or to drive vehicles that have been adapted to support folks with physical disabilities. And once you get above a certain number of seats or once you start driving a vehicle that's been equipped with something like a wheelchair lift, it is a legal requirement that you have a Class 4 unrestricted license. Employers care enough about this that they'll give you preferential treatment even if all you have when you come in the door is the learner's license. And that's because they can help you to complete the process. They'll, for example, often let you borrow their vehicles for practice or for the actual testing. And they'll probably offer you some kind of incentive, such as a pay increase once you've completed it. Even on the education side of our field, it's always a good thing to bump up your resume, especially in an area that proves that you have uh, diligent safety practices and that's the case here. Doing this type of training will make you a safer driver even if all you're driving is your own passenger vehicle. Only a small part of it is focused on the technical. Really what we're going to learn here will translate across any type of driving at all. And what if you can't qualify right now to get your class 4 license because you're not the right age, because you haven't got the right prerequisite license, or maybe you have a health condition that limits you. It's still a good idea to know all of this content because as a passenger, you're going to want to be able to recognize when people are doing things that are considered unsafe or driving vehicles that probably shouldn't be driven. And they'll be a more qualified advocate with those skills as well. There's probably no course where people fail the test more often than in the class for a learner's one. And that's because, I think it's because, people rush. They think it's going to be easy, they assume they don't have to study, and they want to get to their final exam. And so often, they go and tackle the exam thinking, what's the worst that can happen? Well, these days, if you go and track, tackle the class for a learner's license test and you fail it, the worst that can happen is that they can actually make you wait a growing period of time with each failure between exams. And so it can really, really, really make it difficult to pass. You're far better off to study in advance. And the same is too true if you're doing our in-class test. So please make sure that you read the right chapters in the book and study it exactly the same way as you would any other content in our course and apply for the right license when you go in. Don't apply for a restricted class four license. Those would only allow you to drive a taxi or an Uber, and that's not going to be the qualification you need. Make sure you read the Driving Commercial Vehicles book. I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. It's available online for free. And one of the things that you should really focus on is what I call the marginal boxes and all the charts. They often come up on the tests. Do make sure you study just the same way as you would for any other content. Often study groups are a good idea and so are flashcards. And you'll find a link to the practice test. It's for the Richmond, practice, Richmond Public Library. And you'll find that on our website and I strongly encourage you to go and do it. Many of the questions there are the same as the questions on the actual exam. So here's what the book looks like. I've put this link on the course page and you can either view it right from the particular link just by simply clicking on full screen. What's great about this is that it really does operate more like a book when you use it this way. The disadvantage of it is that you see two pages at a time and it's a little bit more difficult to read. But you can go straight to the pages that you want and that's a real advantage here as well. And I'll show you that you can download it in just a moment as well. But I want to show you something particular here. And that is that this is on page, uh, this is read in the introduction of the book. This book, Driving Commercial Vehicles, is for people who want to get any kind of commercial vehicle license, class ones, twos, and threes included. We don't need to read every chapter. A class one license is the most comprehensive license. It allows you to drive anything except a motorcycle. And down here is a class four. And you can see that we have the most blank spaces. These are the chapters that we need to read and this couple pages here as well. So we do not need to read all of this material and that's an important thing to understand. 
Um, you'll also make sure when you see this, that this is a page later, that it shows you the distinctions of the vehicles. And this is the class for unrestricted that we're focused on. You can see there's a minimum age of 19. We'll speak more about that in a moment. And you can see that it says a maximum capacity of 25 people in the vehicle. We'll talk about the minimums in a moment. And it also shows you that it includes vehicles that are adapted to transport people with disabilities. Now I mentioned the marginal boxes and here's what I mean. The boxes and the margins are examples like these here. And a lot of people think that these are sort of just trivia, but they're actually often highlighted areas. It's a better way of thinking of emphasized areas. And you can see that these definitions really do speak to why we want a class for uh, unrestricted license. Now let me downsize this and I'll show you that you can also download the book if you'd like to. And I'll just squish the screen down here a bit. And here's what it looks like. If you want to download the vehicle, download it, you can save it to your hard drive. I don't think you want to print it because it's so many pages, but you could if you wanted to. And here you can just scroll it like this. And it reads pretty much on an, uh, on an iPad or anything, just like a regular book. So make sure that you're following along as you're watching the videos with the book and make sure that you're using the book to study. The videos touch on the main ideas. They do not attempt to cover every last thing. And the videos don't have very many graphics in them. So it's really important for you to go back and make sure that you take a look at some of the graphic examples. I'll try to put a few of them into the videos, but most of them will still be in the book. Okay, here's what we're gonna cover in this course. In this first video, we're gonna talk about the steps you'll need to take to get your license. And then in subsequent videos, we'll cover all the rest of the items on this table of contents. And these are roughly correlating with the chapter titles in the book. You'll notice the last two are a little bit different. For example, we'll have to do some in-person work to demonstrate a pre-trip inspection. Many, many people don't know how to go about the process of checking things like their tire pressure, their fluids, and understanding the different parts of the car. So we'll do that in person. And we'll also spend a little bit of extra time working on signals and road markings. So you'll know what signs, signals, and road markings are important. That's part of the testing process for the license and in our course. How do you pass this course? Well, under normal circumstances, we would ask anybody who could qualify to go and get their class four learner's permit and then submit a copy to me. The cost for doing that is $15 paid to ICBC Driver Services. And under normal circumstances, they're open from 8.30 to five o'clock Monday to Friday. You do not need an appointment to go in and get this done, but you do have to go in or you are advised to go in with, our, with one hour at least remaining in their business because they wanna give you a full hour to complete the test. The test is done on a computer and then there are some questions they'll ask you about your health and your eyesight and so forth over at the, the kiosk. Now, if you can't take the test, um, you can take the test offered in class. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. It's not as good because employers don't consider it to be a qualification but at least you'll have a leg up when the time comes for you to be able and to go in and do the learner's license. Now, if you're one of the lucky people who's already got a class for or better license, and I mean a class for unrestricted, like for example, if you have a class for unrestricted, a class three, two, or one, you simply provide me with a photocopy demonstrating that it's still valid and you're all done with this course. So what are some acceptable reasons for not doing the learner's license at ICBC Driver Services? Well, under normal circumstances, the list of things would be pretty slim, but because of COVID-19, this year we're going to be a little bit lighter in terms of this qualification. If it opens up and students get the opportunity to go in and do the class for learners, we're gonna encourage you to do that, but we're not gonna require it this year. Again, it's really not a qualification to say that you completed our in-class test. So for an employer, that class for a learner's license really has more weight. So because of COVID this year, we're going to be a little lighter on that requirement. But under normal circumstances, even without COVID, there are some reasons why people might not be able to do their learner's license. The most basic is that you have to be 19 years of age or older before you can attempt it. And you must have a current class five license or better. You cannot have a class seven, you have to have completed your class five. And if you have too many points or you have some prohibition from driving, 
for example, from drinking and driving, or if you owe a big fine to ICBC, they may not allow you to write the test, and you can document any of those. There are also circumstances where health reasons might limit you, such as if you're deaf, have seizures, partial blindness, color blindness, or epilepsy, or sorry, I said seizures, a heart conditions is the other one, then you can uh, go to your doctor and a doctor will provide a letter saying that you cannot qualify. And any reason that you want to submit would normally need to be documented. What do you need to do to get your class four license? Well, these are the chapters that you need to study. I've just shown you where to find them in the book. But these are the chapters that you need to study specifically for the unrestricted. As I said, you must hold a full, a full class five or six license. And um, you could have a license from another province. You must have an acceptable driving record with fewer than four tickets with points. And that's within the last two years. And you can't have any criminal code vehicular violations in the previous three years. Drinking and driving or driving while under the influence or impaired are the most common. And again, you must be 19 or older. You can have no outstanding motor vehicle fines. You must meet all of these medical and vision standards, as I've said, including things like neurological conditions, such as dementia, okay, and diabetes conditions and so forth. Now, if you're in good health and you've been maintained and your doctor signs off, then it's usually not an issue. You'll have to present acceptable ID and you'll find that enlisted, sorry, in a list at the back cover of the book. And usually one of the pieces of ID requires you to have a picture such as a BC ID or a passport. You have to apply for a learner's license first. It's just a simple slip of paper and it's good for one year. They usually cost to a driving, checker, driving record check at the same time and charge you a fee. And you'll have one test, but it's actually two tests at the same time. Just like our in-class test, it will include knowledge questions and questions about signs and road markings. You won't be able to tell when the test is switching between the two versions. Only ICBC thinks of it as two tests. And you'll be asked to answer health, hearing, and vision check questions to one of the staff people there after you've completed the test. You'll have to afterwards go and get a road test. Now, not for our course. I'm talking about when you want to ultimately go and get your full license, you'll have to go into a road test. You really do want to do some practicing, both of the pre-trip inspection and of the driving before you go and do this. And that's because you'll be actually asked to do a pre-trip inspection as part of your uh, driving road test. You'll actually literally have to do it and it's timed. So you'll have to practice getting faster and faster without being uh, less than thorough. You can only do it in a vehicle that is eligible. And this is why I mentioned earlier, it's a real asset to have an employer that will let you borrow one of their vehicles. The vehicle must have 11 to 25 seats. And that includes the driver or it must be a vehicle that's adapted as we talked about for people with physical disabilities. Your medical form must be completed between the learner's test and the driver's test. There's usually about a hundred dollar fee by a doctor for that. So make sure you're budgeting for it. Once again, we don't require you to do this. This is when you're out there and working and working towards getting the full license. There are limits on how frequently you can retest. So you want to make sure you prepare. And this is true also of the learner's license. Don't go rushing into that process because there's not only delays between retest opportunities, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger each time. And the government can ask you to re-examine any time, for example, because you had a, sp uh, a speeding ticket or because it's just simply a lottery thing. They can send you a letter in the mail saying it's your turn to take the test again. When you go to do your class four learner's test, class four road test, I should say, make sure that you show up 15 minutes early and that you budget one to two hours for the whole process. Okay, no need for me to spend a lot of time in these last two slides, but these are the various classes of licenses in BC. A class five is the license people have if they're driving a normal passenger vehicle, and if they have an N, that's called a class seven. Similarly, you can get a full license for a motorcycle, that's a class six, and the N for a motorcycle is called a class eight. Class four vehicles, the one we're focused on, as we said, has two different um, levels. A restricted allows you to drive up to 10 passengers, and we want the unrestricted that allows us to have 11 passengers or uh, to have vehicles that are adapted. But there's a limit on the number of passengers we can have up 
uh, from the 11 and that's to 25. So we would not be allowed to drive, for example, a school bus. In order to do that, we would need one of these licenses. Class 3 licenses allow us to do things like drive tandem axle vehicles, such as, for example, garbage trucks, dump trucks, um, cement trucks. Class 2 is what you see a bus driver having, and Class 1 is what allows a person to drive any vehicle on the road except a motorcycle. So people who are driving tractor trailers have a Class 1. Okay, that's going to end this video. We're going to start talking about safe driving skills in subsequent videos, beginning with braking in the next ones. Make sure you have a pad of paper by you and that you have the, um, the book ready. If you have two devices and you can have it beside you, it'll definitely be advantageous.